just have a question for Jail. Uh, would you review anime that weren't released, like available to buy on DVD, but were streamed over the internet, like on Hulu or Crunchyroll? Or has no, or has no really English release, but is available online for US viewers to watch? Not at this time, and I will tell you why. Um, because, uh, now I will talk about them in other videos, like I do the, the, the theme song videos typically for that, you know, and, and I talk about them on Twitter all the time, like currently I'm watching, let's see, uh, I, I know they all, like a couple of them stopped this week, like Kids on the Slope, Surikama, yes. and uh, Poker Bear Cafe. Yeah. And, uh, thinking son, thinking son. Um, but like, uh, here's the reason why I only give a full big ass review to the stuff that's released, because this industry needs all the support it can get. And it does not have to be, like, I totally plan on reviewing on Ohana. Um, it doesn't, so, and that one's not dubbed. It doesn't have to be English dub. I think a lot of people have that misconception. It just has to be, like, available on DVD. And, or not DVD, Blu-ray, whatever. Just available in a way that you can contribute money directly instead of just watching streaming. I will talk about streaming shows, but a full review, I give to those shows because I'm like, hey, support the industry and buy and or rent this and tell other people to, you know. Even Master Martial Arts did that because people were like, that sounds awful. I gotta see it, you know. <laughs> and I'm cool with that. I'm actually cool with copies of Master Martial Arts uh, selling because that allows Funimation to license stuff like Michiko and Hachin. Has, have you guys heard of it? Yeah. Yeah. Michiko and Hachin. Um, yeah, what? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna soapbox here for a minute. So Michiko and Hachin is the show that came out in 2007, and it is this gorgeously animated show with music by Shinichiro Watanabe. Not yeah, music direction by Shinichiro Watanabe, the Cowboy Bebop guy. Oh my god. And um, it's, he wasn't directed by him, but he he helped with a lot of the production. And it's about like this crazy Latina chick who um is traveling through, I, I think it's been a long time, so I may have my facts wrong, but she's either traveling through Mexico or the, the southern United States looking for this man who betrayed her and left her, and along the way she picks up this orphan who's being, she has a Harry Potter childhood, she's being abused by, uh, by her like very strongly religious uh, aunt and uncle, and she kidnaps her to use as like, uh, I think a ransom or something like that, um, and they just go touring around the southern US and uh, South America together, and it is so fun to watch, and it is very Americanized, like it is, as you can tell from the setting. It's very comfortable in an American setting. And it just went by and nobody licensed it for years. And then Funimation picked it up and I'm like, this better sell well. Because it's really, really entertaining. Um, in the same vein as how we be bought kids on slope and that sort of thing. So yeah, um, go buy that from them when it comes out. Or just look at the trailers and stuff. I mean, look at the opening song, you'll already be sold. So, yeah. What was that called? Is that, is that real? Michiko and Hachin, or Michiko to Hachin in, in uh, Japanese. It's not a real country. It's like a country that's based on Brazil. Oh, they, oh, oh, it is, oh, they made up a country for them to travel to. I see, all right, but, you know. <laughs> was there a question? I forgot what it was. <laughs> it, was it was specifically for her. Oh, that's so, right. Um, uh, she looked at me and I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, it's me, and I think um, one of the first people I saw was, I'm not entirely sure what your cosplay is from here, uh, named the Black and do you, think, uh, do you think the anime industry is dying because it lacks creativity and they don't even know what direction they're going? Do you think the anime um, industry yeah. Uh, yeah, I got it. Um, the anime industry is dying for a lot of different reasons. I, I think that um, we have an entirely new kind of crowd that has come with a new generation that really loves like nothing but moe blobs. Um, and, uh, and I guess, you know, those people will keep buying stuff, and when I say stuff, I unfortunately don't actually mean the anime, I just mean stuff, uh, like, figures, and snuggle pillows, and other really weird, um, novelty toys, and so, uh, I mean, the older kind of more action-y stuff is maybe slowly being drifted away from. It's not yet dead. Um, the U.S. industry has sure been circling the drain, and that's for a variety of reasons, mostly because most of the sales that happen, again, in the U.S., they're not DVD and Blu-ray sales. They're like figures and, and other varieties of things, t-shirts, that sort of stuff. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's entirely a lack of creativity because when you find something that's really good, people usually tell one another and tell their friend and tell their friend and tell their friend. And, and usually the really good stuff gets seen. Um, but, but I don't know, maybe I'm just way off base. I mean, you go ahead. 
Uh, well, it depends on which industry you're talking about. Japan and America are very different in how the anime circulates and how it's marketed. Like, hugely different. Um, in Japan, like, anime has always been about, like, figure sales and stuff like that. It's just changed over time. Like, it used to be giant robots, and then in the 90s we had a weird mall where um, things were kind of just, people were throwing money at things. And we got a lot of, like, creative stuff out of that. But we also got a lot of crap. And we're just kind of coming back to the economy's not as good in Japan, and we're coming back to what sells figures. And now what sells figures is it's not giant robots, it's girls. And so that's part of it. And the anime industry in Japan has always been based on product. And that's just, you know, what's going to sell product? Okay. We still get stuff like kids on the slope. You know, it just, it just depends. And, uh, you know, and uh, the American industry is very different. Um, the American industry is actually doing better right now. Um, Still, they're still struggling, but we're doing better than we were a couple of years ago. Like, the bubble's already burst and it's a humbler market, but the companies are reacting to the fact that it's a humbler market. Like, Funimation is doing a really good job of pacing themselves and, and, and covering things well. Aniplex is actually, and, and if you don't, their business model is very different. They sell stuff at a really high price, but they do that so they can stay in business and make stuff available to the people that really want it. Like, Monica Magica is worth the fucking money. Um, it really is. Yes, yes. You have a beautiful cosplay. Can you stand up real quick? Can you give a shot of that? Oh, shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, so, I mean, if you want to support the industry, do so by any means necessary. Um, they do need your help, but I, th I, there's no reason to be all gloom and doom about it. I think the industry will continue to exist in some form, and it just has to adapt with the times, so, you know. We'll be okay. Okay, yeah, pick, pick whoever's had their hand up long time. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, first of all, um, if you, since you've watched a lot of anime in your time, and now that there's more more like and then, um, is there anything, other, anything, any other cliches that you don't like, that you don't like seeing in anime, or are you going to just start seeing more of, or that's just too common? Oh, can I go first? Yeah, you can. Okay. If there were no such things as cliches in anime, I wouldn't have a show. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm telling the newbies about exactly what you expect to see in anime. I mean, my first episode was Moe. So, I mean, you know, and then the next one was like emoticons. So, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I frankly, yeah, I'm done with there being a lot of stereotypical things in anime. I don't see why anime should be any different from any other form of media, be it uh, live action movies or games or whatever. I feel like it's, it's animation. It's just a different form of storytelling, and so we should be innovative and surprise our audience every single time. But like, if there's one thing that... Okay. done with for a little while. It's it's harem. Um, which Thank is you! Episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can do it because it's obviously it is a it is a huge staple in anime, and it has some really important roots like uh, Urusei Yatsura, uh, Tenshin Muyo. Uh, like there have been some really good things that have done it kind of okay, and then there's the stuff that like almost like I go and I read synopses of things on like Crunchyroll or something, and it's like. Um, Sosuke is a 16-year-old boy in high school who uh, runs into a girl his first day of school, but then some other girl is living in his house. Suddenly, somebody else moves into the neighborhood and they're all reincarnations of characters from Romance of the Three Kingdoms. What are they? They're all like ghosts or aliens. It's like, no, no, I'm done. I'm done. Just, just stop. That's, that would be the one. <laughs> I, I just want to see good shit, like even if it's got cliches in it. I just want to see it done well, so whatever. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I like 
good shows. If it's got some kind of weird cliche in it, I'm okay with that. Like, I could deal with Moe. Okay. I could deal with Hera. I could deal with whatever it takes. So I just want a good show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, one more. Um, which probably speaks over here. How many people have got? Oh. Who has that hand up for a while? I don't have Okay. Hey, that was just right in front of you. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, I guess, I, I know J.O. and Nash have talked about Tsunami coming back. It's not the you know, April Fool's joke, but I wanted to know how Psycho Nico and Mouse Girl were like, talking about it in their minds. Um, I've talked about it fairly in depth as of recent. Uh, I did a live audio stream of commentary of the first week that it came back, which was amazing. And then um, I recently did a vlog on uh, somebody who tried to compare Toonami to the gaming industry and was like what? raging at the fact that um, we're just being fed this little stuff. And they're like comparing it to Marvel vs. Capcom 3. What? And that, what? And they're comparing it in such a way that like, um, uh, you pay $60 for this game, and then a few months later you get the exact same game just with a few more characters and you throw down $60 more, plus you have to pay for the uh, add-on content that's already written on the disc, you just have to pay to unlock it, blah blah blah, and I'm kind of thinking, you can't even compare to Nami to Capcom, like, at all, because, like, do you have any idea? Like, the difference between these two industries, right? Like, the movie industry and the video game industry are about neck and neck. They're doing about as well as one another. They're making, like, 10, what, billion a, a year at this point? 10.5 billion a year. And it's really hard to get a grip on the numbers of the anime industry, but the last that I was strongly able to find, and this was back in, like, 2007, so of course they're gonna be off, but they were somewhere around I think only 4 billion and 90% of sales are stuff and not the actual anime themselves, the DVDs and the Blu-ray and stuff. Now granted, Toonami is not back in the form that we really wanted it, okay? What they're playing is like, um, you know, three-fourths old Adult Swim stuff that was already running and we've seen for the last like 10 plus years already, and then only two other anime that um, are relatively recent in, in the grand scheme of things. So it's, it's not where we want it yet, but the fact of the matter is like the, the Toonami supporters in Cartoon Network are like so small in comparison and they can only do so much and anime is such a small industry in comparison to these other industries that are doing massively better than anime is, okay? And so like if they were to go up to their superiors and say, hey, can we have money to support Toonami and uh, acquire new licenses for stuff? Then they're gonna say, huh, well how well is this industry doing? Is it gonna make us money? And they're like, what's well, making a few dollars? They're gonna, they're gonna have their faces laughed in. Like, they're gonna think that's ridiculous. So the only way to really get Toonami to be where we want it is, in fact, to watch Toonami. I realize that to some people, that's like, you can't ask us to support you when you don't provide us with the thing that you want. Well, unfortunately, it's it's too small to say that. It, it just is. Horse girls. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, watch watch you know, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How many times can we watch Fooly Cooly? It's, it's only so many episodes. I know. <laughs> 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 and how old is that now? Especially Cowboy Bebop. Those stoners, we gotta see their mushroom zombies. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, it's a shame, it really is. Um, I think it was my turn to pick somebody. I saw a, a person with fedora-ish hat and blue shirt raise their hand first in this instance. So. She's carrying the bottom of us. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, she has a tail. <laughs> oh, well, the big makes horrible noises, so I try not to use it too often. Screw it, let's hear these voices. Oh, she's carrying the bottom of us. Oh, oh. Two questions. 
One J O, how on God's green earth do you pronounce your name? I guess I've been saying it wrong for a long time. And two, what advice would you all give to someone who wants to start their own show? Uh, well, number one, it used to be Yezu Otaku, but everybody said Jesu, and now I'm like, fuck it, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pronounce it however you want. I don't care. At some point, here's here's the, my easy answer is just say J O. Catchier, sounds like a DJ name, fun. And, um, Teo, yeah, not Joe, that's the other one. Um, he's, he's much bigger and much more muscular and, and has mustache, you know. Um, but, uh, so I just say, say J-O because it used to be Yezu Otaku, you can say Jesu Otaku, I really don't care. Say however you want. Um, second thing, advice for your own show, um, be consistent and know why you're doing what you're doing. Because uh, a lot of people get into it like, I want to be internet famous! It's not worth anything, guys. Like, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you know, like, pay all your bills, and can we say this, it's not gonna pay your fucking bills? <laughs> I, I can confirm it will not be. Yes, it will. Very securely, And, I mean, you're not gonna walk down the street and get people buying your beers. It's not gonna happen. Uh, that's not what internet fame is. I don't even know if, whether you can call it that. But um, you should do it because you love it and because you have to. Like, you have to do this to express yourself. And so if that keeps you going, then you can keep going no matter what happens, because you'll have good and bad times. And the thing about consistency is, if you have a great first episode, I saw this guy did a the name interview show a little while ago, and I was like, you know, he's got a really interesting, I can't remember his name or his, the title of his show, because it was back in November. Um, he was like, I, and I was one of the only people that I've ever like said, watch this guy's show. And then he didn't put out a second episode for like nine months. And I don't think, and that's what everybody does. Everybody does this. And if you, so you gotta be consistent right out of the gate. You gotta go, like when I first started, I think I did an episode every single week. Ha 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 Anybody knows my schedule now knows that's hilarious. But hey, they weren't as good back then. So, um, uh, I know they were, they're, they're shitty man. Uh, I'm embarrassed myself, so, okay, so. but um, yeah, so be somewhat consistent, even if you can only do it once a month, do it once a month, because that's at least consistent, because, you know, um, that will slowly garner people that are, like, able to tune in, because they know it's coming, you know? Um, I guess those are the two biggest pieces of advice I can give you. Um, along those same lines, like, if you're going to be doing it regularly, make sure that this is something like you really want to do. This is, because you're going to, it will become somewhat of a job, and for me for a long time it had been very much my job. And it's like, you had better love the heck out of doing it. Okay, are you doing it because, yay, this would be fun to do, or like, I am really passionate about what I am talking about, and I really want people to understand what I'm talking about, so that's kind of along those same lines. Other things are like, real small, real nitpicky things to make yourself look a little more professional, like try and um, either script something, or if you can come up with things off the top of your head, that's fine, but stay very concise with what you're saying, don't go on rambling fits, uh, try and keep out your uhs and your ums. I know I'm totally saying uhs and ums up here, I'm not scripted. Um, <laughs> and, and so, uh, just, just little things. I, I remember um, when I was trying out for the Nostalgia Chick contest, uh, there were lots of people who submitted stuff that uh, rather than necessarily talking about the material that they were presenting. They would show like really long clips of the movie or TV series they were talking about. And it's like, well, why didn't you just tell me to just watch this movie? So, so try and uh, kind of pick out smaller hunks of things that get your point across rather than just showing us the movie. Uh, in fact, if you do that, I can pretty much assure that somebody out there on the internet is going to throw some legal paperwork your way. But uh, they'll throw legal paperwork your way, whether you do anything. But you're on that's YouTube. true. I'm sorry if you're on YouTube. Like, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. It is. It's an unworkable environment, and, uh, and I'm so sorry yeah. everybody has to work with it now. I was lucky. A couple, two, two or three years ago, it wasn't as bad. So. But you gotta try is the thing. You gotta work with the venue you have. And then like other little things like, you know, turn on a light. Please, uh, please. Yes. Turn on, a light. Turn, turn on a light. Like I I don't have fantastic light, but you know what? I love natural light. So like I try to film during the daylight and in front of my window like not with the window behind me. 
the window in front of me so you can actually see my face. So just real simple things, even if you don't have money for a light or anything like that. Just and turn off your hardcore air conditioning fans, <laughs> otherwise we can't hear you. Just little things like that that will make you seem more professional. Other than that, creativity is up to you. So I have nothing else to offer. That or just make really famous friends. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, technically, I kind of did that with you, Mario. Yeah, Jada. Jada was here. I believe Mark. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's hand picking time. Okay. Um, the little gent in the white shirt, way back there, that uh, was really sweet when I met him. Video that each of you are the most proud of. <laughs> I know what mine is. Go ahead. Go ahead it's go gonna ahead. be at the end of the panel. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was a short answer. I still need to think. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I can make like, it. I fucking know. Uh, it's the one at the end of the. <laughs> hard on this uh, one video that I did uh, for a promotional video, sort of, for Kanji, and uh, Ju Wario and I were going to go up to, uh, it was Ontario, to go to Kanji, this convention up there, it was a two day long event, and we were going to have this showdown with Dr. Holocaust, who oh. does uh, YouTube videos up there, and he's, he's going to help us release this battle that we totally did, and so I, I did this really long, and uh, Josh here helped me uh, significantly with that, um, helped me make it not suck. It really, otherwise, it would have completely blown. And I worked really hard on it, and we made this gun that I've had no uh, reason to bring up in another video yet, but I need a reason to, that I called the Nostal Gun, which, um, it's got like a number pad on it, you type in a year, and it's like, 1984, Transformers, and it like shoots lasers. <laughs> Or G.I. Joan, it shoots lasers, or it like shoots uh, gas, like Darkwing Duck's gas gun. Like I've got all kinds of different modes I can send it to, and I was really proud that I established this piece of technology, but A, nobody watched it, and I spent all this time on it, and, and B, like, again, I have not had a video that has had good reason to bring it back up again. But that particular video, that's all, like, I think people just thought that it was me sitting there talking about, guess who's gonna be up Con G in February? And so, <laughs> I, I think people skipped over it for that reason. But I'm really proud of that video. You don't need a reason to show us something like that. <laughs> <laughs> talk about Toonami, but first, here's my gun. Give me a cruel Kaylin, we'll do something. <laughs> uh, well, I was trying to think, because there are a lot of reviews I really, anytime I get to work with other people, because what I do is very isolationist, and anytime that I get to include other people and do sketches, and, um, so any video, uh, hey, yeah, he started that. We'll, we'll finish it soon, but, um, but then I realized my, easily, I was like, why am I thinking about videos? Easily, the thing I'm the proudest of. Like, no fucking competition is not a video at all, it's the first basket radio drama. Yeah. It is. Yeah. so many talented people, and I get to make people laugh and make people cry and bring across this great story and in a new way that's not really like any of the other mediums it's been in, but it's still entertaining, you know. And so yeah, it's, it's, it's got less viewers, obviously, but listeners, it's not even viewers, listeners, but I mean, I, I just, I'm amazed that I was able to do that. I, I thought that I wouldn't get enough people auditioning to even do it, and I would have to cancel the project and be really embarrassed, and the opposite happened. I just, no, no competition. Anytime I get to create a story that moves people, I mean, no. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm just going to say something about my, my little episode. It, it, that was probably the most editing time I've ever spent on any video, ever. <laughs> like, there were so many filters and like crazy things that I had to do, and Mark helped me out a whole lot with all cutting and everything like that. Yes. It comes across. 
So that's what you guys yeah, I hope you guys really like it. I feel like we spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> Oh, uh, my turn. Uh, how about right here in the... It's like... Uh, I'm not on this yet. Yeah. <laughs> the lovely locks. <laughs> Hey, I was just wondering um, how you three felt about, um, pu ah, I can't say the full name, um, Monica, um, Angica, um, just, I think, anyway, I just wanted to hear your opinion, but thanks. I can tell you that J.O. and I are going to have different things. Oh, God, yes, I, I heard you. I'm not involved in this, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, not seeing it, and us. drawing the line. Because I sat there and I was like, I I've been listening to people say, oh, this is so great, and it bends the rules of Magical Girls, uh, and like everyone just dripping in good things to say about it. And it was like, uh, I finally watched it on Crunchyroll, and uh, like, first episode, uh, the thing with the red eyes, it's evil. Okay, that's the end of the series. Like, I felt like I saw everything coming. Because I saw you coming. <laughs> I get it because you guys told me that much. Like nobody told me any plot. Nobody gave anything away aside from the tone. Um, and, and then the ending, I didn't necessarily think went in the direction that. Like, like I didn't understand why things happened the way that they did. Like they gave an explanation, but the explanation, like they were things that I didn't feel like they equated to one another. Now granted, this is not to say it was a terrible show. I, I totally don't think it was a terrible show. In fact, it, it probably was one of the best things I've seen in several seasons. But it, I found it more predictable than I was hoping that I would. <laughs> It's, it's a masterpiece. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I totally disagree. It was, um, I, I mean, I was jaded going, I don't know if you guys know this, but back then, I was working, I was working at a and Yes. Um, I was working at a and at the time that uh, Monica Madika aired, and I was doing the preview guide. And I did, did the preview guide for the first episode. In the first episode, I was like, eh, it's cute, three out of five. Like, I was like, this is, I guess, for little girls, it's a little darker, but, like, if you just see that first episode, you don't know, you know? And I was like, I kind I guess it looks like it's going somewhere darker, it's very pretty, I love the art style, but it's, it's okay, you know, like, so I didn't know. But then I heard the hype, and I'm like, honestly, when I hear hype, it makes me more jaded towards it. it had, that had the effect with, on me with Durin Lagan, which, Durin Lagan, good show, but I wasn't that crazy about it. I was like, you know, it's in the system! <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and I liked the show, but like I wasn't in love with it. And so I saw Monica Magica, and I just uh, every episode I more and more in love with it. And by the end, I, I had issues with the ending too. But then I saw it again, and then it made sense. I was just confused. And it was not a good translation. I saw a fan sub of Naughty. Um, but I uh, got the official release, and then I watched it in English as well as the, the official subtitles. And oh, okay, I got it. And no, ma masterpiece, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant show. Okay. Love it. It's it's. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm supposed to share my opinion. So yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, it's tied with. I, I did like the, the top 25. Top 25 favorite anime, like, um, it's now tied, if I, I don't know where I put it exactly, but it's like number five tied with Princess Tutu since they hold a similar feel in my heart, so, I mean, I love it, oh god, yes.
But yeah, I will go through the hallway in the back and yes. I'll head in the